everybody. Welcome, welcome to the closing beat. We're doing this one recorded. Don't want to take any chances today. Uh, the hurricane did not hit us directly, uh, but it did cause a lot of wind and all around the area. I've called friends. I've called other offices just to be sure uh, they're having issues too. A little intermittent issue uh, with the internet. So we got someone coming out, of course, uh, and they're working on it, they say, but I uh, didn't want to take the chance that we didn't get to stream live after such an important day. Uh, a couple really interesting days here in the market. So we're going to dive right into it. We'll get this uploaded. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, okay. Stock market down again today. However, it was not a repeat of yesterday. So a couple things I want to point out today, you got financials, you got energy, of course, towards the end of the day, pushing things down. Uh, but bonds, really, really cool thing happened today in bonds. And normally I would, I would get to share this with traders and we would point it out and everything. Now I'm going to share it with you guys today. So we'll get into that. Uh, you've got the Dow down another 500 points today, actually 545. Oh, you can see it over here to be exact. Uh, you've got 57 lower on the S&P and the NASDAQ actually was the best, right? It was only down one and a quarter percent today, losing 92 points. 92, my favorite number, by the way. Keep that in mind. I might ask for you to remember that in the future. Um, uh, so the NASDAQ actually doing better. Tech stocks got a little lift. Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Not that Snapchat matters, but uh, Twitter, Facebook will go through them. Some of these names actually got a little lift there on the day. Now, tomorrow, okay, earnings. There's a really interesting thing happening here. I'm going to try to slide over to the charts. Before we get into the markets, tomorrow you've got earnings in the big bank stocks. They are going to pull back the market, meaning pull it back from falling, right? They're going to actually support the market. Watch what happens here. If the earnings come in good and, and all this analysis and everything, and the stock starts lower, if the financials and JP Morgan City and Wells Fargo, all of them start lower, watch the buyers come in. You got to see a little bit of that today. It was really cool if you follow sort of the intraday movements. Uh, again, we are not short-term traders here at Jazz Wealth, uh, but we do like pointing out these cool things when we see them. Okay, so tomorrow you've got uh, earnings from the big bank stocks and that will be the driving factor. It will be all the excitement in the morning. It will cause the support here in the bank. So if you're wondering, are the markets gonna take a little break? Bet you see that tomorrow. It's gonna be pretty interesting. We will of course cover it and keep you updated on that. So uh, financials with the earnings, we pointed that out. You got uh, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, uh, maybe a regional bank in there somewhere. And so uh, that's that one. If we go over to gold, yeah, gold. <laughs> I'm gonna say gold for the first time in months and months. So this is typically known as the safe haven trade. All those commercials on TV where the, the celebrities like, I buy my gold at, at whatever gold mart, and uh, that's what I count on. Oh, they've been sucking up the heat for a while. They've been taking a lot of bullets because gold has been forgotten about. Nobody cared about gold. They were like, why would I do this? I'll go in a stock market. There's no need to be in gold. And so there's this attraction uh, away from gold. That's a bad way to say it. Today, you had people come flying back into gold uh, you can see the volume here. So it's not just one of those really one day wonders. The volume came in almost a 3% gain, which means any gold mining stocks, gold delivery stocks, gold warehousing stocks, anything in that category did really well. One way you can check out the miners is the GDX. That's an exchange traded fund for the gold miners. Um, all having really good days today. Besides volatility, they were your leading sector on the way up today. That's the safe haven trade. However, it hasn't been a good one, right? Just until recently here. Uh, gold hasn't been a good safe haven trade. Of course, nobody's been interested. It's been selling off little by little. Energy and oil uh, continued their sell off. If we go over to the price of oil, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, you've got this continued pullback. This is what's known as a pullback inside of a bullish trend. It is one of, look, look back over here. It's those scary few days you have to sit through before things figure out what's gonna happen next. Over here, it's the scary few weeks you have to sit through before things try to recover. All the while you can see this. Now, oil is very volatile, I'll give you that. So it is going to be more and more active, typically not something you wanna mess with, but oil, uh, I mean, directly you don't wanna mess with, it's pretty volatile. But oil continuing its pullback right in the midst of an uptrend. Speaking of which, let's look at the Dow. I have left this red line on the, the screen here since summertime, right? Pointing out the long-term uptrend. If we were to smooth this line out and stretch it out over here, oops, are we not getting close to hitting what would be known as support? We are getting very, very, very close to doing that. And that's what the long-term trader looks at, right? 
They look at the long-term trend and go, I realize there's going to be these ups and downs. Some are scary, like this few weeks here, that was pretty annoying. And then, of course, now, that's pretty annoying. I get it. But the long-term trend, is it still higher? Well, you can say that on the Dow. Um, if we look at something like the NASDAQ, is the long-term trend still higher? I'm using a different chart setup today. Sorry about that. Let me zoom in here with this a little bit. You can kind of see it right there. It's barely hanging on to the uptrend. Very cool, but you see how like in April or March and April in February, you had to suffer some of the downturn. Now, if you're brand new at vesting, in investing and you started it in mid-January, New Year's resolution was to invest, you got up and going, oh, you were frustrated pretty much right off the bat. You got, you got smacked. If you just started investing in March, oh, you got smacked. It hurt a little bit. It recovered. Right? Play, remember what happens after the markets fall. Uh, if you started investing anytime going back here through, well, August now, unfortunately, you're negative. Right? Don't let it kill you. Don't let it bother you. Let it motivate you and excite you. I did a video earlier today on how the market decline really helps you. Uh, anyways, the S&P 500, that one's not looking so good here. Earnings from the bank stocks will help bring this back for some confusion. Got a little stat for you, too, if you're interested. Uh, I love stats. You know, we always point out stats. Anytime, uh, going back in the entire history of the S&P 500, if the S&P 500 had a one-day loss of 4% or greater, what happened after that? Well, we're long-term visions here. We look long-term. So if, any, if you go back and look at every 4% down move in one-day period over the next year, the next 12 months from that moment in time, the S&P averaged 21.98, uh, I put 22, 22% gains from that moment in time. What's that tell you? The discount is always there. The stock market always goes higher. It does have moments where it sort of frustrates you and pisses you off and maybe makes you nervous, which by the way, before I move on, where's Warren Buffett? Ask yourself this, where are the big investors, right? Again, take this off for a minute. I'm not trying to motivate you to do anything. I'm just gonna talk as an individual here for a second that's participated in the markets for the almost the last 15 years. Every day, by the way, not just checking in every once in a while. Every day watching every tick, that was what I did. So, where is Warren Buffett? Why is Warren Buffett all of a sudden not on TV? He's not out there doing all these conferences. He's not on CNBC with that girl that he likes to talk to, or the news anchor lady. He's not there. Where'd he go, right? Why is nobody saying, where's Warren Buffett? Where's all the big investors, right? The normal garbage people that talk on CNBC and Bloomberg that just like to be a part of the action, they're still there. Where are all the mega, mega investors? Where's Carl Icahn? Carl Icahn's normally all over stuff like this. Where'd he go? Where's Warren Buffett, right? Ask yourself that. Always look under the surface. You know where Warren Buffett is? You know where Carl Icahn is? They're shopping. They're out there doing their work. They ain't got time for the media right now. They've got a ton of cash they need to put to work. And all of a sudden, you know that they are buying stuff. You know that when we see their reports come out at the next quarter, you know we're going to see that they were in here buying this, right? Because they're quiet. They're working hard. They don't have time to go talk on TV and try to prop up the markets and make everybody happy and comfortable because old Warren Buffett told us everything's going to be fine. They're shopping right now. They're buying this discount. Remember what happened to Apple. And uh, I'm going to take a second and talk about this here. Apple, when it had that collapse back here in February, when the whole markets pulled back, come to find out Warren Buffett was quietly buying shares, right? We later find out in their 13F filing or whatever they put out, we found out he was buying shares of Apple. Everybody else was panicking and he was in there buying. He wasn't on TV. He wasn't trying to get people excited about anything. He was buying. Where do you think he is right now? So I'll give you that. You got the markets falling. Has Warren Buffett said, I'm looking for a discount? Yes, he said that numerous times. Has Warren Buffett said, I've got this pile of cash just sitting here. I don't know what to do with it. Yes, he said that numerous times. All of a sudden, he's not talking. Brother shopping, I'm telling you. He is out there shopping. Okay, going to go through just a few names today because uh, we've been talking about them recently. Delta. Delta was higher by 3.5% today. Earnings. Notice the focus on revenue. Okay. I'm going to say it again. I think I said it every day this week. This earnings season will be all about revenue. I've been through a million of these earnings seasons. Not really. Don't leave the comment there. Oh, you're not that old. Uh, I've been through so many of these since 2000, right? This one's going to be focused on revenue. I will not be the I told you so guy. I'm going to be the I told you ahead of time guy. Case in point, Floor yesterday plummeted revenue, right? That was the focus. Today, Delta gets rewarded for 3.5%. 
revenue. Revenue came in almost $100 million more than expected. The company then said, you know what? Going forward, we're going to raise our revenue guidance, meaning they told Wall Street, expect more out of us. Go ahead. And companies don't like to do that. So they did that came in $100 million more. They said that they're controlling their costs, they're, which means they're, the margins, right? They're able to keep their margins there despite rising uh, borrowing costs, rising fuel costs. So revenue is a big focus. Nobody cares what their earnings per share was. I think it was $1.80. $1.80 a share. Nobody cared. Everybody went, revenue? Margins good? Sweet. Okay, 3.5% pop. So that was helpful today. Uh, interestingly, American Airlines didn't participate. They, they usually work together there, right? So when one has good news, usually the other does. Okay, Square, lower today, 10.8%. Uh, CFO left, I think. Just bad timing to announce that. CFO left, she's going to Nextdoor, which is a horrible app, by the way. Uh, doesn't work, in my opinion. Uh, and so shares have been uh, just falling 35% since hitting this high back down over here. Technical traders are going to be right on this 200-day moving average. If it were to open lower tomorrow, you'd expect the technical traders to take a shot and go, well, that's a little discount. How about I buy some square? So uh, that's that. I can't really tell you what to do with it, though. Sears, uh, another 30% decline today. It doesn't really matter. We're talking pennies at this point. Uh, Sears is all basically gone. They are now officially skipping their payments to their vendors. Their vendors are pissed, uh, and they are just working on a bankruptcy filing. So good old Sears. They're going to... They're going to do what they're going to do. Tesla still stuck at 250. If you're a Tesla trader, 250 is a big deal. I can't tell you to buy it there. I can't tell you to sell it if it breaks, but I can tell you if that 250 area is violated, meaning it trades under 250, uh, whew. <laughs> that's all I'll say. Uh, lithium, or I'm sorry, Livent. <laughs> Livent. This is a new IPO company that actually makes a lot of money. Now, the chart doesn't look like anything because they just went public today. This is a big deal. Notice how they did well today. Not, they priced lower, so we could argue whether they did well or not. It's a long story. Priced at 17. They were hoping for 18 to 20. They make money. So this company is an IPO that actually makes money that people can invest in. 80% of all of the IPOs that went public this year don't make any money. So they're getting clobbered, right? It's a highly profitable company. They've got revenue of 21 million on earnings of 70.2 million. That's what I'm talking about. If you're gonna take a company public, it better be making money. These guys are making money. Uh, so uh, I, I think that was a success. They priced lower just because of the fear in the markets, by the way. Okay, uh, JP Morgan earnings tomorrow. I fully expect that people will want to buy any dip or negative news from this uh, report, but I also fully expect for them to put the trade war news back into the headlines. I bet you we'll be talking about that soon. If anybody can do it, they can. Uh, limited brands, 6% uh, higher on the day. Look, watch the video I did. I did a whole overview of limited brands about two weeks ago, maybe, talking about how these guys are getting their act together. I did. It was one of those like, you know, Kramer on uh, CNBC things where I just went through the whole company, their fundamentals, everything going on. These guys are getting their act together. They are probably going to sell one of their lingerie brands, La Senza, uh, and so they can focus on their core business, right? So they also reported a 5% increase in same store sales. Everything I said in that video is coming true, right? So again, it's not like I'm not magic. It's just uh, you, you keep a track of these things. Limited brands continues to show they can work their way out of this little bit of mess. Lastly, stick with me. I just want to show you one thing real quick. If we go to, I'll, we can use anything, the S&P 500. In the middle, I'm going to go to the charts in a second. In the middle of the day, a uh, program trade went off. A program trade is a way for a large investor. They don't tell you who it is. Nobody gets to know. Uh, we'll eventually figure it out. Uh, but a program trade is when, let's say you wanted to sell $50 million worth of Apple. You can't do that on your Robinhood account, right? So a big institutional investor needed to move from the stock market into the bond market. And it was so cool to see it happen in real time. Now, the way they do this, I'll show you. You can actually see it on the charts. So the way they do this, it started right here, about two o'clock, right? Or what? Oh, let me zoom in a little bit more for you. This is a five minute time period. Right at about two o'clock, you notice the volume start going up faster and faster. I'm not on the charts. There you go. Uh, right at about two o'clock, that's what happened. It's called a program uh, trade. And what they did is they said, we don't, we don't want any more of these shares. We need to sell them. And so they were selling off the market as a whole, every position. It was a mutual fund of some kind somewhere, a pension fund somewhere. 
selling everything, not their whole position, but to move it to the bond market. So you can see that program trade going off. If you watch it minute by minute, you can actually see how they have it programmed. It's so cool. So in this case, what they did is every time it blipped higher, the system figured out how many shares were available up there uh, for buyers, and then they sold to them, pushed it right back down. And so the system would, uh, then the stock would go higher. You'd see the buyers in there. The system would go, how many, how many, how many? Sell to them. And then the, back up again, sell to them. And so the stock market kept trying to go up, can't do it, can't do it, because there was a sell order coming through every time it figured it had enough shares to sell to those buyers. And you can actually see it, whether you use a one, two, or five minute chart, you can see it every time it tried to blip up, sell, a little higher, sell, a little higher, sell. And then what happens is when they get to the final 20% of their position, they just let it loose, man. It's like opening the floodgates. They say, we're down to 20%. It factors how much adjustment is going, what that's gonna cost by pushing the markets lower, and then they just push it down. That's why you get this waterfall drop. As a day trader, if you can, pop, if you can spot that sort of thing, cash money. It doesn't happen a lot, but if you spot it, that's what can happen. Now, the longer term investor, you need to know this money's going into the bond market. I'll just use like TLT as an example. Hey, what happened right at the same time the stock market was selling off? Where was all that money going? It was dripping into the, all the bond markets. Now, this is just focused on long-term bonds, so this doesn't even cover the whole can of worms, but they were moving money into bonds. What did I tell you two weeks ago, right? Gave you the update there that bonds are now attractive to these mutual funds that were taking excess risk in their target date funds and things like that. They can now safely move money into the bond market without having to worry. They can take less risk now. Now that was them. That was them moving it today. I'm not like a conspiracy guy, but that you could see the money moving to the bond market. When you can spot that, you go, okay, that's a mutual fund. Everything you thought is coming true. Bonds are now attractive. Your target date funds will now include more bonds. We'll eventually see who it is. I look at a half a dozen uh, 401ks a night. I'm eventually going to see which one it is and be able to tell you that was Vanguard. That was T. Rowe Price. We now know who it was, right? So they're taking less risk. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Money's leaving the stock market. It looks scary. It's just going to the bond market. Investors aren't scared. They're repositioning. So that's the biggest takeaway. Look, you can leave me any comment you want. Uh, whether you like me, hate me, you think this little feather thing on my head is sort of weird. Uh, maybe it looks like I'm in my mom's basement or something. I'm 36 years old. We're financial advisors. I'm just passionate about this and I will dissect everything as much as possible so that you don't get an opinion. Now we know the facts about what's gonna happen and what has happened. If I could give you the facts, then you're not fearful anymore. You have no reason to be scared of a stock market falling, right? So that's the facts of what happened today. All over TV, they're gonna, it's like sports media. They're gonna try to guess what happened, what team won, who lost and all that. No, money just simply moved to the bond market and we just proved it. We just showed it to you. That will happen again, by the way. One target date fund, one mutual fund, whoever it was, just made a little adjustment, but they've managed billions of dollars. So then another one, and that's what's gonna happen. More and more of them are gonna say this. Yeah, we can go to bonds now. It's totally cool, right? Notice it pushed the uh, yields of bonds down today as well. So now yields are coming back down. Good for you guys, you wanna buy a house. Anyways, uh, I could go on for hours about this, but I wanna get this video posted. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. If I help you in some way, hit the subscribe button so it really help us out. Next year, gonna do a lot of conferences. I wanna show the industry that we're doing things differently and you guys do care. And I wanna show them by showing subscribers. I wanna show all the data so that they know people actually do care about their investments and just need to be educated to make the best decision. So uh, that's it, that's all I ask of you. And uh, have a great day, we'll talk to you soon. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Thank <laughs> you.